Right. So I am also very honored and extremely excited to have been given this opportunity to come and share a few words with you. I think so far the line of thought is clear that going to the IMF they say is not a panacea to the structural problems that we have. And that is exactly what I'll also be harping on, albeit with uh, different perspectives. Okay, so as I was coming here, something just struck me, which was a song Baumia sang some years ago when he was in opposition. Let's see, my voice is not that good when it comes to songs, but we'll see if we can repeat a bit of it because it's very relevant for our gathering here today. Do you remember something like teachers are suffering, doctors are suffering? Okay, All right, so let's continue. Lawyers are suffering, students are suffering, shoemakers are Hawkers are suffering. Lecturers are suffering. Judges are suffering. Okay, great. So that is it. <laughs> oh, trust our people. Yes, yes, yes. People in trust are suffering. Great. Excellent. That is the point. That is just the point. That's the summary of what I came to say. Whilst the people are suffering, the president is enjoying including bathing in the skies. Yeah. He is bathing in the skies whilst people cannot get food to eat. You remember the uh, information Sam George brought, at, brought, brought us? Zero, one, zero. So people wake up, they can't have breakfast, or have lunch, and then go to bed hungry. No, that can't be. It can't continue in Ghana. Well, somebody is saying, but what has this got to do with a lawyer? I assure you, it has everything to do with a lawyer. There are many constitutional provisions which seek to ensure that the Ghanaian doesn't go hungry. Okay? We'll start with Article 15. It says that the dignity of the person is invaluable. Dignity, dignity, dignity. If you check, one of the necessary constituents of dignity is that a person who needs a job should be able to find one. So, our constitution guarantees us jobs, and yet, the president can't create any. As if Article 15 is not enough, when you go to 35, 36, and 37, it's further made clear that government should take steps to run the country in such a way that people will have jobs. Please, you can check it. Google, you see 35, 36, 37. The government should take steps. Yes, thank you. Somebody's waving the constitution there. Thank you. Yes, we, we don't have time, much time to read. Okay? Yes. So the constitution guarantees us jobs. Yet in practice, it becomes what? A charade. So we have to rise, and that's how come your organization has the right name. Arise Ghana. Yes. Arise Ghana. Great. So let's rise up and save Ghana because the constitution guarantees our existence that we should have jobs. Make sure that for the ones that government cannot create jobs directly, government should run the private sector in such a way that the private sector will be able to what, deliver on the jobs. It doesn't mean government itself can share its responsibility of creating jobs. No. Government must do its own and also run uh, policies that will enable the private sector to also deliver jobs. And even for those who cannot get these jobs, the constitution guarantees that government should give freebies. Yes, government should give freebies, help the poor and the vulnerable. So when you see government giving leave, 
livelihood empowerment, that program. It's not because government wants to be benevolent. It's a constitutional injunction that for those poor and the vulnerable, government should do extra to provide for them. So government is not just being magnanimous, no. It's a constitutional duty. So for as long as we still have people and millions of them who are hungry, then it means the government has failed. Is it not this government that said we should give them 18 months and they'll turn things around? We've done five and a half. And still. Yeah. The president said it. 18 months. That give him 18 months, he'll turn the economy around. It's five and a half, and we've rather gone back. We are now on our knees. So maybe the best thing we can do at this stage is simply to ask the president to resign. That's the least that the president can do, to just resign, because he has failed, failed abysmally after all the plenty talk with his economic wasted, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, the economic waste, um, yeah, he too must go. That's the plain truth. That's the plain truth. It's not as if we've climbed here to say things just to tickle people. No. Every day I get up, I, to be honest with you, in the last two months, I mean, I'm getting angrier and angrier. Because the TV is going on too much. You're just stealing. That's what they're doing. Yeah, plain TV. Look, and if you doubt it, if you doubt it, for those of you who have followed news filing, uh, uh, the big issue on city for some time now, look, on the 12th of June, I went to news filing Joy FM and broke a story of the chief executive of the Northern Development Authority, the former one, Dr. Alhassan Suleimana Anamsoya. You see that while, when he was in office, he signed a contract for $5.7 million to A and Q West Limited. They were to supervise some poverty eradication programs in the Upper West region. When Dr. Namzoya left office, his successor came and they doubled the contract from 5.7 to 10.4. Yes, straight, with the stroke of a pen. And that's not the end. Today, when you go to the Ministry of Finance and you check the portal, GIFMIX, that's where the contracts are uploaded. No, no, it's not even 10.4, but it's now $21 million in the gift. Yeah, so meaning that if we hadn't blown the alarm, they were not just going to take 10.4. It was going to go up to $21 million. The reason for the $21 million is that before Dr. Anamzoya came, the contract was for 21 million. But when he came in, he thought that no. Look, to get efficiency and all those things, let's break down the contracts and bring in more people. So the original 21 was reduced so that other people can share. Then they can also provide the services. That's how come A and Q West Limited, their share came down from 21 million to uh, 5.7, but as I have told you, the 21 million is still in the gift mix system. So, if we hadn't blown the alarm, bit by bit, they would have gone for all of it. And with this, Anamzoya wrote to the president in January this year. Today is what? 20th July, right? The president hasn't taken a step. The chief executive is still in office. Is that the sign of a president who can fight corruption? Can this man fight corruption? He's actually a part of it. That is the plain truth. As long as the president does not take steps on this NDA matter, I can fairly conclude anywhere that he is a part of it. Because if a whistleblower blows a whistle that somebody is about to steal, the letter is addressed to chief of staff. Six months on, no action. We, 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 we broke this story since 12 June. 
the president has nothing to do with it. He's not responding. It's not to, fair to say he's part of it. It's part of the cabal until he takes steps. Because even assuming when the letter was delivered in January, yes, we have to be practical, it's possible he didn't see it. Okay? But what about the chief of staff? The vice president was copied. There is also the coordinator of the Jubilee House called uh, Napagatia Sulemana. Cathedral. She was copied. The famous cathedral. The priority of priorities. And they are not doing anything. So what do you think? I did not ask them together. It's crazy. So the gist of my uh, message is that from a lawyer's perspective, the Constitution guarantees that as part of dignity, the citizens should be able to get jobs, citizens who are willing to work. So when you begin to run an oligarchy, oligarchy, where only a few persons are in control, they alone, and I'm really happy Honorable Adongo is here. You see, Honorable Adongo broke this story about, about a year ago or eight months ago that the finance minister's company was making so much money from the bonds. You see, it was going on on social media. It didn't attract our attention that much. But do you see that, was it last week or two weeks ago, the finance minister went to parliament, and when he was asked, he has publicly admitted